as you probably know, the Kanken, or the Nihon Kanji Noryoku Kente, or Japan Kanji Aptitude Test, is a standardized test、uh, used to measure one's knowledge of kanji. It is mainly meant for、uh, native students, but it may be relevant for learners as well, largely because there are a lot of useful study materials for it. And this is one of them. This is a study game released by the Kanken Association early in 2019,、uh, Ichimaru to Tabishi o、uh, Shirimoji Kanken, or A Journey with Ichimaru,、uh, Kanken Butt Writing. Yes, apparently, Shirimoji or butt writing is a thing in Japan. As you can probably guess, this is a game meant for Japanese elementary school students.、Uh, it includes material for Kanken levels 10 through 5. Which are basically equivalent to the kanji from the first six grades of primary school. One important thing to be aware of is that there is a free version and a paid version. The free version has extremely annoying full screen ads, so I absolutely recommend paying for the full version for the couple of dollars they want、uh, for your own sanity. I don't believe there's any way to upgrade from within the app or to transfer your progress from the free version to the paid version, so start your data accordingly.、Uh, links to both will be. Hello. So, let us begin by looking at the core gameplay of this game. Basically,、uh, you are given questions in a fairly similar format to the actual Kanken, where you have to either write something in kana or write the kanji or whatever.、Uh, that's nine. And the basic gimmick is that the Ichimaru character will. After 15 seconds, give you a hint of what the answer is in Shirimoji.、Uh, grass, Kusakari, probably. Tochi? Yay, I always get that one mixed up. Uh, the questions are basically this. I've also seen occasionally multiple choice analogies, but. And you have 30 seconds to answer each question. There's one of those multiple choices, by the way.、Uh, Sora is to Umi.、Uh, that one. If you don't answer in 30 seconds, you get the question wrong. Frame rate's kind of terrible here, probably because I'm screen recording this.、Uh, Keen Midaru. Got it. Oh, come on, that's totally a. Whatever. Tayake. I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, Hinto Maru, good to say. Oh, that's the kanji, you. That one always trips me up in this game because you look so much like the katakana ta, whatever.、Uh, Mori. And if you do well enough, you get a couple of bonus questions here where you frantically try to write as quickly as you can. That's definitely supposed to be Kai, but my frame rate didn't let me. Uh, uh, out of time, whatever. But really, that is the essence of the gameplay there.、Uh, when you finish, you get a record of everything you got right and wrong. Uh, it does show you your scribbles if you really care, if you want to contrast what you wrote to what the handwriting recognition thinks you wrote. And you can go in and review the questions if you want to look up vocabulary or something that was in there. And 
sometimes the same sentence is shared between a couple of questions, which is kind of nice. So this is interestingly challenging for learners, even at the most basic level. In addition to learning the kanji themselves, you need to be able to read simple native sentences well enough to identify the kanji or reading they want, as well as to write it with reasonable penmanship and to do it all within 30 seconds. It's a combination of challenges that may not be relevant to everyone's goals, but one that many people may still find worth looking into. Outside of that, the structure of the game should be pretty familiar to anyone who's ever played Candy Crush or something. There is a series of maps with 20 challenges each. Each challenge is themed around a different type of kanji. I've seen uh, nature, uh, numbers, people and body parts, uh, tools and objects, that kind of thing. Uh, when you complete a challenge, uh, you get stars and currency. Uh, if you complete three maps of 20 challenges each, uh, you unlock a harder difficulty. And more importantly, you can go up a level to a broader map where you select your Kanken level. Uh, these maps are based on the geography of real-world Japan, so each Kanken level corresponds to a region of Japan. Uh, level 10 is Okinawa and Kyushu. Uh, you move up through Shikoku and Chugoku. You go through uh, Hokkaido and Tohoku, then uh, Chubu, and finally Kanto, and then Kansai at level 5. The three maps within each level then highlight uh, certain prefectures or cities within the region. I assume the icons around the map here have some connection with these uh, cities. I don't know enough about Japanese cultural geography to uh, identify the connection. Uh, changing difficulty levels then means changing seasons on these maps. You start in spring, which is easy. Uh, you then move into summer or normal, and then winter, hard. The difference is basically failure tolerance. Uh, in spring or easy, you can fail as many times as you want. Uh, in summer, uh, you have these five pencils or uh, lives. Hard, you go down to three lives. Uh, there is also uh, extremely hard in winter. I assume you'd have one life there or something. I haven't unlocked it. I probably will not anytime soon. Uh, changing seasons also changes the graphics on the map a bit here. Uh, I believe once you unlock a higher difficulty on one Konken level, that difficulty is available for all Konken levels. I could go straight into uh, level 5 hard if I really wanted to, but I won't. There is a bit of a framing narrative here. I don't think it directly affects you anywhere outside of the introduction, but basically, Ichimaru and family are aliens who look like rabbits, but aren't really rabbits, uh, and they enjoy visiting Earth to study kanji. On this particular visit, uh, their spaceship had mechanical problems and crashed, scattering them all over Japan. And now, Ichimaru needs your help to uh, reunite with them and study lots of kanji along the way. Between that and the tutorial pop-ups, this can feel like a lot of complicated text that may be hard for learners who aren't used to reading things meant for Japanese first graders, but you can probably button through it and you'll be just fine. In the spaceship view, you are able to use your in-game currency to unlock characters other than Ichimaru. There are also uh, vanity items you can purchase. There's also some biographical data about each of these characters you can view. You can also click on your character to get a random question to answer. Uh, half the time it's, uh, do you like some aspect of school, to which the answer is always yes. Uh, the other half it's recognizing the reading of some kanji compound. The first time you do this within some time interval, uh, you get uh, intimacy points with your character. I have no idea what that does for you. There are also some uh, stats and badges you can accumulate as you play. I haven't really looked at those in detail. And then there's a share feature that lets you enter any text you want, in kana only, and create an animation of your current character writing shirimoji of it. What you get when you export that is a low quality GIF. Uh, I guess it would be suitable for pasting into a messenger app or something, I don't know. But that's really most of what this app has to offer. Uh, as far as I know, the actual gameplay doesn't have a lot of variety to it. Uh, it's not going to be as addictive as Kanji Crush, uh, Candy Crush, anytime soon. Uh, but it might be a fun thing to add to your Kanji study, and it might be a way you can learn vocabulary and improve reading speed at the same time. So, thank you for watching, and good night! またね。